how are you my students today we proceed with our session as we started uh, discussing about a subject which is known as literature in english so on the last or on the previous periods we discussed uh, a lot of issues which are included on this subject uh, uh, I think we ended uh, looking about uh, literary devices. So I think uh, if we can be asked or if we can read any kind of literary work, there are several literary devices that you may determine or you may realize. So if you want to measure yourself, just try as much as you can to find out any kind of text uh, uh, and when you are reading on that text, you have to be very careful so as to realize those, uh, those literary devices as we discussed on the several periods. So, uh, uh, those literary devices uh, that or which we discussed, uh, uh, it will enable you uh, to make analysis or appreciation of any kind of literary work. And apart from that, you are someone who you are studying uh, this subject which is known as literature so if will be if you if you will be much on those uh, literary devices it can help you that's why you're gonna be a, a, a someone who will be engaging in case of producing or preparing a several literary works yeah, you may write a text or it can be a novel or play or uh, 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 and other literary devices you may also you may compose a song so if you 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 will understand those figures of a speech or literary devices at all uh, i think you will include on that that's why when you want to different when we want to differentiate between uh, 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 literary works and the non literary works the one among of major criteria that we may use to measure that this is literary work and not literary work we may use or we can observe through literary devices that have been used that's why this is a, a major uh, technique or technique that are used in most of literary works so uh, i think we we started uh, we studied a lot of literary devices theoretically so i think uh, 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 before uh, uh, i started uh, before uh, uh, I, I started to, to teach you about how can we analyze or appreciate literary work uh, you may prepare yourself to do it practically rather than as we discussed uh, as we did discuss uh, theoretically so today we proceed with another issue which is known as elements of literature elements of literature so today uh, we are going to discuss about the uh, elements of literature and this element of literature will enable you uh, uh, to make analysis or appreciation of any kind of literary work so uh, those issues which we discussed uh, like retail devices that's why when you speak about retail devices uh, it includes uh, 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 it includes a lot of issues like figures of speech or figurative language other literary techniques uh, uh, and among others so all those issues which we discussed uh, uh, those can be included in only one among of issues which we are going to discuss as soon as possible. So these two elements of literature are, are is very important. That's why uh, uh, you can't make analysis of any kind of literary work without being uh, enough free uh, as much that can help you to make it analysis. So uh, 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 these are the issues, these are basic. So I can say these are basic things that can enable you to make analysis or appreciation of literary work. So elements of literature, there are, there are only two major or elements of literature which are 
the first one is form and the second second and the last one is content so these are two uh, elements of literature the first one is form and the last one is content so these are two um, uh, elements of literature so uh, 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 when you speak about the form in Kiswahili we can call it funny when you speak about form it simply means in Kiswahili as a fan also and second one is content so when you speak about content in Kiswahili also we may say maudhui so I think these are two words which you are you are familiar uh, about those words that's why uh, if you can observe uh, there are a lot of people when they are communicating each other or one another they use several or such words uh, as appear here that is the first one is form and the content so these are so familiar uh, words to you i think so but for those who are not familiar about these two terms which are uh, form and the content so uh, they, 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 i can uh, i can try as much as i can to make uh, 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 illustrations that can help you to know those but the first issue which you have to take into consideration that when you speak about form is fun in Kiswahili as well as content is maudhui. So you may listen as someone when uh, uh, several people speak one another or each other, they can use that wewe mbona ulicho kizungumza hakina maudhui au maudhui yako ni yapi. So that uh, uh, it, it simply means that what are the major uh, uh, goals or aims of your communication or of your uh, 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 presentation which you are being done on the front of your uh, of your people of others so let us discuss these two elements of literature uh, uh, which is form and the content so let us let us start on the first uh, element of literature which is form so form refers to the artistic technique in which the work of art is made or refers to how a literary work is presented so when you speak about form it simply means that refers to the artistic technique so uh, i refer to the art artistic technique in which the work of art is made so when you speak about a uh, 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 form it simply means that as a, uh, is, is, is a, a artistic technique so that uh, 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 which the work of art is made so how a certain literary work has been made so how this certain literary work is made uh, 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 generally we can call it form so how a certain thing is formed so even other things we may say or we may use forms of government so this simply means that how a government is formed so even in literature when you speak about form how a certain literary work is formed so that is a form of literary work which you are speaking here or you may define in another uh, in, in another words you may say refers to to how a literary work is presented so if you are reading or listening or watching any kind of literary work you have to look how this certain literary work is being presented that's why we have several work, literary works that have been that have been presented differently one after another so how these several literary works have been presented by using different techniques or styles and among others it generally uh, it is generally called it a uh, form A literary work is presented it we call it a, a form it is a superstructure of a literary work so also when you speak about a uh, form it simply means that how uh, uh, how a literary work is looked for 
And due to that, make some scholars to define form as the superstructure of a literary web. When we speak about the superstructure, we talk about how a certain literary work is looked for. Is looked for physical uh, uh, appearance or appearance of a literary work. So how a, a literary work is appeared. So that is a form which you are talking here. It is include the following. So the superstructure of a literary work that simply means that how a literary work is appeared is organized, eh? it has been arranged, or it has been uh, prepared. So I can give you uh, an example uh, when you speak about a house. So ha house is uh, something which have uh, several characteristics. So if, we, are start, if we, are, we want to know how a house has been prepared or has been built, even in literature, a literary work, we see or oh, we are discussing when you speak about form we are discussing or oh, we are concentrating about how a literary work how has been formed has been presented has been prepared has been organized together so as to be as a whole thing so that is a form which we are talking here it is it includes the following issues so when you speak about the form there are several issues which are included on the and the, on the first element of literature, which is a uh, uh, form. The first one is setting. The first uh, 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 issue which is included on the, on the form is setting. So setting in Kiswahili we call it mandari. So where a literary work, where and when a literary work has been taken place. So that is setting. And the second one is uh, a style. So when you speak about style, in normal words, uh, we can define it as how do we performing or uh, doing or performing a certain something. So if you are cooking ugar, there are several styles which or techniques which can be used to prepare ugar. So even in literature, when you speak about style, uh, it simply means that are there several techniques that have been used uh, uh, to prepare uh, particularly to a certain, uh, particularly a literary work? So that is the uh, second one. And the third one is plot. So when we speak about the plot, in Kiswahili we call it as, uh, 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 we call it as uh, 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 a plot as a mundo. How a literary work has been arranged. So and the and the and, and another one is characters and the characterizations. Characters and the characterization. So when you speak about characterization and the characters and the characterization, we are going to discuss a lot about it. Uh, characters and the characterization. And the and the another issue is title of the book. Title of the book. Title of the book is another. Uh, uh, is another title of the book is another uh, 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 issue which is included to the form and the last one is language use or diction so on the language or oh, language use or diction uh, we are going to discuss about those issues uh, concerned on the form as one uh, among of the literature so let us start uh, the first issue which is setting so when you speak about setting setting is the time and the place the time and the place in which the literary works take place setting can be real setting or imaginary setting if the place where events are told is truly geographically located, is called a real setting. And if the case is otherwise, is called it a imaginary setting. So when we speak about the setting, we have uh, to know that time and the place where a time and a place in which literary work 
has taken place. So uh, we have a lot of literary works and there are several circumstances or scenario or places in the year which have been uh, which has been prepared. So on the setting here we have to know that time and the setting. So when you speak about the time when a certain literary work has been uh, has been composed or has been acted or has been written so that is a uh, time which you are talking on the setting and the place we are focusing about where where a certain kind of literary work has been taken place it can be in dar es salaam eh, kilimanjaro tanga so and among others also in the, at the national level it can be uh, uh, in tanzania kenya uh, uganda nigeria south africa and among uh, uh, nations also uh, uh, after looking on that setting setting can be real setting or imaginary setting when you speak about uh, real setting it simply means that a place where a ritual work has taken place is real is real exist so if uh, there is a certain place which is very known maybe it can be taken uh, in Mwanza so I think all of us we do agree that when you speak when you are speaking about Mwanza it is real uh, geographically located so that is a real setting but when you speak about imaginary setting this is imaginary we are trying to imagine to imagine to imagine that's why these places where uh, a ritual work has been prepared or taken place uh, do not exist uh, uh, or do not uh, do not geographically located do not tour geographically located so that is imaginary so here there are several of uh, myths or stories which are being narrated which has been uh, which had been it took place for a long time ago so you may see it tries to give us the life which uh, normally do not exist on a certain place. So that is an imaginary setting. So here, uh, if, the, if, if the place where events are told is truly geographically located, it can be mentioned by its name of a certain place like Kilimanjaro, Mwanza, uh, 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 Amtwara, and among others, you have to realize that that is resetting, and vice versa. Also, it is a, if uh, if the case is otherwise is called imaginary. That's why those places which have been used as a setting do not uh, geographically located. We imagine maybe we are reading any kind of literary work and that and that literary work tries to narrate us or to take or the actions which have been taken on that literary work uh, tries to, to talk about to the uh, to the unknown world so we know that there is no a place which is which is which is not unknown so every place is unknown so if those uh, literary works which have been presented by using unknown places we may say that that is imaginary setting also I want to add something on the setting there are two types or forms of setting the first one is main setting and the second one is minor setting so when you speak about main setting it simply means that it's a form or kind of setting which, uh, which try to dominate the whole literary work from the beginning up to the end. So it can be uh, Dar es Salaam or Mwanza or Tanzania as well or at all. So that is main setting or major setting. Also, a minor setting, when you speak about minor setting, refer to the small area, uh, several parts or areas or context where different actions have been taken place. So it can be like uh, at, the, at the room 
or at the class, at the school, uh, at the market, uh, at the farm, and among others. So those as a uh, uh, as a as a minor setting which uh, which have been used on the literary work. Another issue is another issue is style. So style it is it is the way of doing or performing something. So when we are speaking about style, it simply means that uh, the way how do we performing or doing a certain something. If I'm trying to drive a car, what are the several techniques? Or what are the, the way I'm doing or the way I'm trying to drive a car so that simply means that that is a style how do I uh, drive a car so how uh, how can I prepare chapat so that is style which we are talking here so if we are if we're performing or doing anything by using several techniques you have to know that that is style so how they refer to the different ways which we use when we are doing or performing different activities in our day life but in literature when you speak about style it, it is me it means that style refers to the way whereby an author presents his or her work in a manner that makes him or her differs from other authors. So when you speak about uh, 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 about style, it simply means that in literature, style we can define as the way the way whereby an author, a person who composes a certain literary work, presents his his or her work. How? He or she has presented or delivered his or her literary work in a manner that makes so different ways which has been used by an author which make which make his or her literary his or her literary work to be differ with other literary work. Also, in simply means we can say we may say that it is the individuality of author. So how an author has been using different techniques to prepare his or her literary work. And this, it can help us to know that these styles which have been used on this literary work are consigned or are mostly used by a certain artist or an author. So uh, by using these different techniques, maybe we may realize an artist who Composing this kind of song is diamond platinum. Why do we say that? Or what makes us to say that due to those styles which have been used on a certain literary work, it can be a song, a person, or, or an author, or an artist of that song is diamond platinum or harmonize. Simply means that due to how these two these two artists are uh, use a different uh, ways of composing or delivering or singing their song. Singing the way they are singing their song. So you may see how a harmonized try to, 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 to sing his song, uh, his statue. <coughs> that is a style which you are talking here. And that realizes or that determines, that is a predeterminant of harmonizes all songs, all songs which you are talking, even as a character, even in the case of texts, how uh, most of uh, literary works or texts which have been uh, prepared by Ngugwa Thiom, the last several techniques which are being used by, uh, by, by, by Ngugwa Thiom in most of his texts, so that is a, a, a style which we are talking here. And those styles make these or several literary works to differ one after one after another. And you may see those, you may ask, you can try to ask yourself, why there are a lot of artists 
we have a lot of artists but why don't they uh, why don't they use the same techniques always that's why every artist tries to use his or her peculiarity or uniqueness ways that will make him uh, that will make uh, his literary work his or her literary work to be different with other literary work so that is uh, a style which we are talking here style style is achieved through the choice of vocabulary use of certain figures of speech or oral literary devices such as idioms proverbs and songs a style can present a narrative techniques and a point of view so in the style when we are listening or preparing or reading a text we have to realize that style is achieved through choice of vocabulary so how an author or an artist tries to choose the words that will be picked on that literary way so it can be achieved through uh, uh, through selection of uh, or through selecting words that will be uh, uh, included on a literary work also through use of figures of speech so we have a lot of figures of speech as we discussed on the previous periods uh, the last several literary devices so also how an author tries to prepare figures of speech which will be included on his or her literary work make it uh, to be a peculiarity of a certain literary work also also through oral literary devices so here uh, an author or a, a writer may use different idioms proverbs and songs so it can be a play but within the play you may see uh, uh, how uh, a writer tries to include several songs on that literary work so that is another uh, literary techniques but uh, a style can you a style can be presented but i want to, to to talk a little bit about different styles that can be included on the literary work the first style it can be personal style so here you may use uh, you may use uh, 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 the names of characters or uh, or the uses of uh, uh, different pronouns also the use of narrative uh, na na narrative form or the use of dialogue form uh, uh, the use of letters in the literary work the uses of songs the uses of other uh, oral literary devices as we stay as we said here so those are the different techniques that can be included on the literary work so there is another issue which is known as point of view point of view is an angle in which a story is told so when you are reading any kind of literary work we have to realize or to find out uh, 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 the angle to which an angle to which uh, to, uh, to which an angle uh, is a story is told or is narrated or is it presented that is our uh, we call it point of view it is divided into three parts namely the first the first person point of view third person point of view and the omniscient point of view let us study those uh, uh, those parties uh, those three parties of point of view as follow the uh, first person point of view this is when a narrator or an artist is identified is identified by you by, by by the use of pronoun i and a you uh, i and a we so first person point of view uh, we may realize this kind or part part of point of view through these two pronouns which are i 
as well as we. So these are the uh, as a first personal point of view in a singular form that is I and the plural form that is a we. So the last part of point of view is omission point of view or all knowing. So when you are making analysis or appreciation of any kind of literary work, we have to know the last part of point of view as follow. Uh, a narrator tells the story also using the third, pe third pe pe pronouns. However, this narrator, instead of focusing on one character only, often tells us everything about main characters. So they motivate weaknesses, hopes, childhoods, and sometimes even their future. So here, uh, uh, it, it tries to combine or to, to include those characters as uh, have the same weaknesses or hope or their, their, their target or aims and others. So everything which have been presented or included on digital work are being presented, are being narrated, are being, deriv are being delivered in general terms. So if uh, an author tries, uh, tries or wants to, to present it in a general term. So if there are several characters who have the same problem, who have the same weakness, who have the same goals, who have the same uh, 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 weaknesses and among others, are being presented in a general term. So that is omission of uh, omission point of view. All knowing, concern about a certain thing that has been intended by an author to be delivered to his or her audience or readers and among others. So that is a, 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 a long discussion which we did about those issues. So there is an exercise here which invites you to tackle or to say which is a uh, which is why which states that why do we say that a form is the superstructure of a literary work? So on the first when uh, I was trying to give you a little bit about one among of element of literature, element of literature which is form. Uh, 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 I tried as much I can, as much as I can, to make a, a elaboration of this concept. So I think uh, there is one among of statements that tries to say, that try, uh, uh, to say or to state that uh, why do we say that literature is a superstructure or literary work is a superstructure of literary work. So why do we say that form is a superstructure of literary work. So you have to discuss it and come with your own uh, views or understandings or suggestions and among others. So let us end here. If God wish, I think we will proceed with, when, uh, we will proceed on another uh, session. Thank you. Uh, I wish you all the best.